ready to get this going, everybody? I think yeah. We have a nice view here. Yes. Yeah, thanks to everybody for attending. Appreciate it. Good to see everyone. Um, Oh, my. Okay, um, agenda review. Before we do the agenda review, um, let's just make sure that we have a wonderful meeting tonight. And so, um, I mean, and I assume we will, and for the folks in the audience, uh, we want everybody, everybody to be respectful of everybody in the room. It's really important we do that. So we all go out of here feeling we accomplished something and that everybody was treated well and that it was a good experience. We're all volunteers. People don't do this stuff if it's unpleasant. Just keep that in mind, honestly. That's the way you build a, a strong civic society, is by being decent to one another. So it's really important. Uh, as far as interruptions go, if there's a, the first time there's an interruption, I'm going to take a recess. Second time there's an interruption, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn, and the meeting will be open. Okay? Uh, so it's really important that we just, everybody, work together, we'll get through it. Okay? I have a suggestion in terms of process also, which is, if, if it's something you're presenting on the committee, then, you know, having more than one, you know, your introductory remarks is fine, but I feel like we're hearing from some members of the committee quite a lot and some hardly at all. So I was going to suggest that other than the presenters of the particular item, once you've spoken, I mean, you'll have to chair this, uh, that, that make sure that everybody else has an opportunity before that person speaks again. And the second thing, I'm wondering if the committee should speak first before we hear any comments from citizens. Uh, we typically do that, yeah. 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 Okay. We'll make sure we do yeah. that. And I agree with the first comment as well. I try to do that, but maybe not always successful. All right, we're ready to jump right in here. The agenda review, everybody take a look at the agenda and see if this is uh, adequate. John? Um, I wanted to recommend, uh, of course, the meetings are long, and as the meeting progresses, people get increasingly tired. And so I was going to suggest um, moving up what I think are the most important items, uh, reviewing the proposed uh, surveillance ordinance, moving that up, up right above uh, working group reports between citizens' concerns and working group reports, and then moving up uh, JSTF priorities for remainder of 2018 <coughs> right underneath that. JSTF priorities, so that's the beginning of new business. Okay, uh, does anybody object? I mean, that seems perfectly reasonable. Does anybody object to doing that? I guess a lot. Anybody all right with that? Check again. Okay, we'll do that. Hey, Laura. Well, one, one thing I don't, I, I would hope there'd be some time that we could discuss the what was in the newspaper this last week uh, regarding the, you know, the police, David Meister uh, thing. I mean, it seems seems appropriate that we that we because I think it has a great deal of relevance to a lot of things we are dealing with. Well, it, it might come in under one of those things. Yeah, I mean, it may be. Why don't we put it under new business? I'm yeah. sure there'll be some disagreement. But there may be about how appropriate it is for us to get into it out. Right. Uh, but how about I put it under new business? Is that right? All right. Other than that, are we good? All right. Let's charge your right into it. Um, who's going to do our timekeeping? As far as uh, yeah. somebody got a David, you David's got out of his timekeeper. Okay. Yeah. So David will do that. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. You've got in front of you the minutes of June 12th. Are there amendments? Um, anything to these? Working group reports, police working group report for would be on the second page that I have. Okay. And there's a suggestion in that paragraph that we would suggest the structure to council, which I think is the opposite of what I remember saying. And then secondly, that the police working group will work with council to implement some groups. No, I think we made it clear we, we wouldn't do that. We felt that it was important to present the information we would share that information we would point out what is obvious that citizens want this and that we believe and i don't know that it needs to be a formal recommendation but we believe the council should um, act on it but what is in here implies that somehow we're continuing to do work that at least i'm not going to do and i don't think anybody else in our group is either 
Okay. Can you? <laughs> people agree that Pat actually stated the. Okay. Can you, can you uh, email me that okay. correction? I will. I will email yeah. the corrections. Okay. We should spell Lisa's and name right. Also Hi, my name. My name is spelled K R E E G E R. Krieger. And okay. Did you say uh, that he's still there? Okay. Yeah. I'm just checking. Did, he, did you say you would take this to counsel? Or how did you imagine that? The way I saw, the way I heard it left was that I said that I thought in order for it to go to counsel, we needed to have some idea about the cost of implementation. Right. Well, we're not doing that. Right. And so this kind of ended like that. All right. Well, all we can do is have this reflected. Prior conversation, we can't really go further. It's fine. Okay. Well, I'll send the corrections then. Okay. okay. So, uh, any other amendments that people want to offer? So, as amended, is there a motion to accept? I will. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. 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 Okay, updates on council action. You're on. Okay, so let's try to keep this brief. Okay, uh, first, uh, you know, I was listening in on the last uh, meeting, but I was not able to participate. So I heard a couple of misunderstandings I wanted to clarify. One was that the published council agenda that had had biannual report in July, um, just to say there was a miscommunication, I to get to the details. I never had put that on the agenda. So I know there were some people feeling like I got I put that on and had to check That's not what happened. Okay. Also, I heard um, David Turner uh, criticize me for um, the mayor's court recommendation, number one, that I made some minor changes. Um, I think, um, and the reason I bring it up is because when I received that to forward to the, the clerk, there were things that we as a committee had agreed to that were not there. And so I talked to Ellis about it. I tried to reach Beth. She has prisoners. I tried to reach what is kind of a, the quote leadership committee uh, to say, you know, this has to be corrected. And Ellis said, fine. I checked it with him. I didn't reach any of the other people. So I made those corrections. I thought I had made that clear to David, but evidently not. Um, so I just wanted to clarify yeah. that, and I do think in the future, when we have a recommendation going to council, it does make sense when we get that final piece from the work committee, and I would like the committee to say, yes, this is okay, that uh, the leadership group look at it, make sure the final piece is correct, if there's any little edits that need to make, can be made that are not changing the, 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 uh, the actual resolution or recommendation, uh, but like, like there was some wording. It was some of it was just editing issues um, that had not been included in the thing I got from the working group. So anyway, I think we're going to need to have a space to for that those kind of little corrections to happen and not to be seen as you know that's not appropriate because uh, so I was hoping that would be okay with the committee. So are you making the distinction so, that if it changes the substance, well, that would be changed. It, it doesn't would, change the substance and it's yes, fine. Yeah. Because it's a recommendation from the committee, so obviously mm -hmm. the substance can be changed. Right. So everybody okay with that so we can kind of know what that looks like? I feel like if we're going to vote on specific language, we should stick with the specific language. We did, and it did not get changed on the piece I got from, I believe it was Laura. And that, the specific my point thing, is, in a general, in the future, if we vote on specific language, we should stick with the specific language, yeah. not have a subset of type that, of change. There was two problems. One was some of the language didn't get included. You understand what I'm saying about a yes, general, not absolutely. the specific thing. Okay. Well, no, I wanted to just bring up, because we had said, uh, Pam, uh, Mayor Conine had said, you know, she wanted six months to be ready to implement it. In the resolution, that language never got put in. It was in sort of this introductory piece, but it wasn't there. So I, that's the little change I made was to add it in. And I put November, because I thought that's six months. Uh, from when we had had that conversation. The other thing was in the introductory piece, there was some uh, language about two-thirds of the um, cases, citations that could go to mayor's court were still going to Xenia. Staff had been saying that was not happening. It was left in the language. I, it would have caused problems if it had come to council that way, because we've been hearing something different from staff. And so I 
change that language. And again, I checked with Ellis. I was not trying to pull the wool over somebody or something like that. But so anyway, I just that was the that's the sort of thing. You know, little problems, little uh, imperfections that can come out of the committees that may need to be fixed. And I'm just saying the liaison with the work with the leadership group, I would hope, could make those changes, and that the committee would be comfortable with that. Obviously, we're not changing the recommendation at all. John, is that okay? Um, I, I think that if the uh, leadership is going to um, change the, the gloss or you know edit the document in some way, even if it's only on the in the introductory part, it should be clear that it's the leadership group speaking rather than the committee. It should, should, you should just you know cite who's speaking in each part of the document. You know make that clear. What, what the voice is. Well, the thing was, I brought it up in our discussion that that was not what we were hearing, and people seemed to accept that, and then it did get changed. Yes, yes, I hear what you're saying there. Yeah, I mean, if an amendment is passed, then of course that needs to be the language that's sent. But um, if you. Okay. All right. Everybody's okay with that? All right, sounds like it. Okay, so um, I um, put in here just some uh, information about the process of the Justice System Commission. Uh, proposal that I am developing. I'm not going to read through that all um, that was for you. So tonight I brought it a draft that we'll be going over. Um, the mayor's part recommendation number one, next steps. Uh, Lisa and I met with Chief Carlson, Mayor Conine, and reporting up Patty Bates regarding this recommendation. And Chief gave us a list of citations he is comfortable having go to the mayor's court, citations he does not think should ever go to mayor's court. And we talked about it, and, and Mayor Conine was, you know, uh, deferring to the chief on all of that and said she felt she could handle that increased workload. Um, so Lisa, there wasn't much detail in that list, so Lisa and I thought that the annex, uh, the annex citations by violation group talk that came out of the data group, um, uh, being able to would be able to flesh that out and then we do want to I know Marianne Queen on council had asked she wants to know the whys on those things from the chief so once we get that more complete document it could go back to the chief uh, for him to put in the whys which I think are going to be relatively simple and then the question is does it does the committee want it to come back here again or do we just keep it in the council's have council you know Lisa and I bring it to so. Okay, good question. Let's spend a minute on that. If you guys want to see it again, if you want to make a recommendation again, you know, maybe you won't agree with it. Um, so did you share that question with the group you met with? The data report showing cases I, that, that didn't, it's like things that didn't. Well, that the, went to Xenia, even though we thought they shouldn't. I mean, they they already had it because they, they had it gone to council. So it, what happened is that Chief Carlson came to the meeting prepared with a list, but it's expressed um, sort of vaguely for the un, unfamiliar, less familiar person. For example, one of the items is MM to M4 criminal violations. So there, that in, includes a lot of things, right, that, that are on that list. So we thought in order for that list to make sense for anybody to look at, it would be good to cross match it against this document to make sure that we understand what Chief Carlson is recommending and then we can look at it with a, a more informed eye. Um, so I, I only recently got this uh, sent to me when, when, they, when they looped in uh, the data working group and I, I tried to express my thoughts about but I understand it wasn't very clear. It was long. <laughs> it was long and, and uh, just oh, no, I don't think effort. we should get into the, I'm not sure we need to get into the okay. content of it. it I'm just, just wondering, does, does the committee, I mean, that is a decision that we didn't make out of that, work, that little work meeting. The question is, unless people really object to that process, do we want to see it again? I guess that's the only question I was trying to ask. I would say yes. Okay. Yeah. Others, I'm going to say yes. It okay. sounds to me as though we may be making pretty, at least some substantive changes. Yes. Yes. And given that, I think it needs to come back. Okay. Unfortunately. 
just because or they are little. Like, okay. That was the time's up sound, by the way. Okay. okay. Um, and then, uh, uh, hang on just a second. Laura, did you want to comment on that? Are you comfortable with her? Just, we're just talking about the process. Doesn't the process, here. yeah, I have a concern um, because the minutes of the last meeting was that the this uh, Lisa was going to put together a meeting with the chief and Pam and council with the sub the mayor's court subgroup when we were left out of that meeting. Yeah. And we didn't have any input talking with the chief and the mayor about what we've been working on for about a year and a half. We don't have a document in writing that we can review at this time. And then I'm also concerned that it now is being shuttled for this detail work to a different committee, not the mayor's court subcommittee. We are appreciative of the data committee's work, but we can read it as well. And we're very familiar with the detail. I think the mayor's court subcommittee is really the appropriate committee to work with the chief, with the mayor, with our liaisons to decide what crimes um, should be here in Yellow Springs and what would go to Zena. I can speak to part of that. Yeah. Um, at the end of last meeting, I had said that I would take that meeting forward. Um, when Judith got back in town, um, I brought her up to speed on the discussion and she took forward the coordination of that meeting. So I passed that on to Judith. So um, I think the other piece of it, I think that's a good, actually a good recommendation. Um, as far as who takes it to the next step, that it go to the mayor's court subcommittee. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. And um, as far as the agenda for that meeting, I, I was surprised, I guess pleasantly surprised, that Chief Carlson had um, wor done work in advance. So we didn't come into that meeting on a blank sheet of paper. And it seemed to indicate a willingness on his part to um, meet not the full recommendations that came from this commission, but to, to meet the recommendations quite far along. Um, but until you see the list, maybe you'll have different perspectives. One of the things that you know we talked about quite a bit that was informative to me, but I'm not as knowledgeable as many of you, was that some of these um, items may be cases where a person had multiple charges and so some of the more minor charges just went to Xenia with the more major charges rather than say come to Mayor's Court for the minor stuff and go to Xenia for something else. So um, I don't know what you think Judith but I think having Mayor's Court subcommittee rather than data group work on it makes sense. I do too and I, I just want to say my understanding was that the Mayor's Court committee was frustrated and and had done their work. I mean, that was my that was the message I had gotten about the feeling other because I did ask the question, you know, should the may the committee or the or at least you be part of it? And that was what I had understood. So it was not an intention to exclude you, just let me say that. So somebody so said yes, back but to if us you want and, to and setting some further discussion up is the end result of this, right? I think we'll hand you the work. I'm not, well, yeah. I'm not the only member of that committee, but yeah. I'm happy to be involved. Yeah, no, no, I mean, if you guys, yeah. So, so the, somebody will be coming back to us from there to oh, set we'll up a discussion. Oh, we'll just hand you the stuff that we have from that meeting. That's all right. It's, well, we can't command the chief or the mayor to attend a meeting. I think council yeah. liaisons have to set it up and invite us to, to the table. This, this is At what this I would point, suggest. Um, sorry, go ahead. I don't yeah. want to no, I was just thinking we've already... Well. Um, I, I would recommend that that you review the um, very informal document that Chief Carlson provided, and and then maybe we could sit down and talk about it. I'd be glad to join you. And then looking at the annex charge statutes, see how comprehensive his recommendation is, and then consider if the group feels that this is maybe not the ultimate goal, but a place to start. But until you look at it, it's hard to know. Mm -hmm. And then depending on what you decide when you look at it, then we can decide next steps yeah. as far as a follow-up meeting. Yeah, I agree. Is that acceptable? Yes. Yeah. So okay. let us know. Okay. So it will, it I don't have a soft copy. I can scan it. Yeah. I, Do you want me to take that? I transcribed sure. it. I'll send it. I sent a photo to Beth. And I oh, transcribed awesome. it. So all right. So then I'm off the hook. Okay, so oh, it'll, 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 go back, it'll go back to the mayor's court committee and it'll come back to this group. So right? then data group can. Okay. Not have it. All right. Can I just say two quick things because I know my time is 
uh, let's see, the, uh, Mary Ann McQueen asked for a biam, uh, and Kevin Stokes um, wanted this, I think it was more from Kevin, the biannual report, which um, is now on a, a September meeting with council. So you're going to see a first draft pack as quick as a wink. And she immediately put down, put together a really nice summary, I think, a draft of summary that's in here that we're hopefully going to talk about tonight. And, um, and that is there because council asked for it. And if we don't get around to talking about it, I'd, I'd like feedback, email, if you can. So if you want something in that report, let me know. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> President Hauge for the council suggested when we do notice and comment, I just want to throw this out for some discussion, uh, that we use, we might want to consider a survey monkey to get more public input. He threw that out. I just want to, I could to tell you guys that. And uh, then the last page on here, Florence Randolph, um, our police outreach person. Uh, presented a report uh, for work for the last council meeting and a very uh, one page kind of little report kind of thing she's doing. Um, and I thought it was very positive and wanted to commend the committee, the task force, for having made that recommendation and the work of Kate, particularly. Uh, I think it's really an important possibility. Okay. That's it. So, thank you. Uh, so now we're ready for citizen concerns, and we're happy to hear from anybody for three minutes, but let me just tell you that if you have a, a comment on something that's going to appear in the agenda, save it for that point, because that's when we'll be most receptive to what you have to say, and we'll be the topic we're talking about. But if you don't see it on the agenda, this is a great time to, to raise it. Any citizen concerns on that bill? Hi. Hi, my name is Corey, and I really what's your last name, Corey? Corey White. Hi, Corey. Corey White. Yeah, I feel like what you're doing here tonight is a really good thing. Um, what's happening with the mayor's court is great. I grew up here in Yellow Springs, and um, we're making changes in the right direction. People need to get help in this community. They don't need to be put in prisons and jails all the time. And the mayor's court can help that process move forward. And uh, I think what we're dealing with here is like an onion. Uh, Ten years ago, I was shot by the Yellow Springs police, a member of the Yellow Springs police. And after that happened, people got together and they started peeling that onion a little bit. And they started changing things. They got tasers. And then I spent 10 years in a mental hospital. And while I was in there, I heard news about other things that was happening in town. Like um, somebody on New Year's Eve got shot with a taser. People said, we need to do something else. And uh, Paul Shank got killed in his house by a SWAT team. And people said, we've got to do something else. But we can't change anything overnight. So what's important is we as a community get together and we peel that onion and see what little difference we can make. And when something else happens, we just keep working on it until we get it right. So thank you. Thank, thank you, Corey. That's probably the best description I've heard of what we're trying to do here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> During the entire history of the committee. Thanks a lot. That was very good. Uh, any other comments? Uh, my name is Mike Miller. Hey, Mike. Uh, what comes to mind immediately for me is when Chief McKee retired and we had that new chief. and. The way I understand that, I'm pretty sure it's accurate, is the new chief uh, told the officers that he wanted arrests. He was the kind of policeman who believed that uh, force was the answer. So Russell Shaw was moving the barricades like he always does for the sidewalk sale. <clears throat> the police said, what are you doing moving the barricades? He said, I'm just moving. He said, uh, Russell said, what the hell is going on here? He said, hell, that's verbal assault. They charged him with assaulting an officer. They threw him down on the ground, charged him with resisting arrest, threw him in the yellow stone, the Xenia police, or Xenia jail, with a $2,500 bond. It was absolutely ridiculous what happened to Russell. And the, and the community knew that. Uh, 
Bill Fel Felker wrote an article for the Yellow Springs News the, that same week, the following week. Uh, spelled out pretty good. Somewhere in a field last weekend, hundreds of people got together and uh, did a fundraiser for Russell and blah, blah. I wrote a song about it, you know, Chief John Winks. Uh, the result being that almost immediately that new police chief was out of here and the village manager who hired him was also gone. That's the kind of response that I would expect to see from Yellow Spring. That's, that's who we are. We don't put up with that crap. We have people evidently on this police force who who don't see it that way. They, they tend, at least the way I'm understanding it, the reason for this committee and this meeting is to, to make them accountable to us. And, well, anything I can do to help speed that process along, I'll do it. That's all. Okay, thank you, Mike. Appreciate it. Other comments? Very much. Uh, so, Sean, for your records, stay here and follow me. Uh, Sean to like Paulson. Uh, so, Hi, Sean. right, so three minutes. Um, I just want to um, really say thank you for the opportunity to speak in this forum. I think this is a very important forum, as uh, some of my colleagues have, have just uh, expressed. I think that, um, you know, look, reminding, looking back on uh, the New Year's Eve event uh, that, that was, you know, really a breakdown in community policing um, uh, almost a year and a half ago now, you know, Dave, um, our local hero, uh, our, our local comedian, uh, Dave Chappelle, you know, he said, something to the effect of that, you know, we can get this right here. We can. And, and so I think that we should. I, you know, I think that, you know, that, that's really a, a rallying call, that, that we do get it right. We have an incredible amount of privilege in this community. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's something that we, we live with, and it's, it's great. And, um, but that also means that, um, you know, we have a certain responsibility to, um, you know, treat everybody with respect and, and our, our love and compassion. And, you know, that, that hasn't always been the case. I mean, if you look at um, our society, we have incredible issues with uh, double standard. When it comes to um, women's issues, there's, there's so many double standards on how men are treated as opposed to how women are treated. Uh, racial issues, there's so many double standards on how um, whites are treated as opposed to non-whites in this country. Uh, also, class issues. We have so many double standards to how, how much a difference we give to a rich person as opposed to a poor person. And, you know, that's really, I think, what the resolution that's created this board uh, was, was, you know, really empowering the, the Justice System Task Force to do, is to really dig in and deal with these issues of this double standard. And um, I, I feel that, um, you know, Instituting a civilian review board is essential in really creating uh, a context for dealing with these double standards in, in our policing, because they do exist in our policing just like they exist everywhere else in our community. So, but the, the uh, potential consequences of the, these uh, either racial bias or sexual bias uh, or classes bias, in, you know, expressed through our police can be very damaging to people, and um, so. The Police Accountability Coalition is working to interview people. Uh, it's an ongoing process, and I got 15 seconds. And so, um, you know, I think that it, it's it's essential that we. I, I got 10 seconds still. Thanks a lot. Uh, so, you know, please uh, consider putting a civilian review board as a, a top priority and really making a recommendation to council. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Sean. Anybody else? My name is 
William Toll, T O L L E, and uh, hey William, hey, and I wanted to thank everybody for uh, what you're doing here, and I want to say that I support Sean in getting the Citizen Review Board of, of the police uh, because not everybody uh, has been directly affected, uh, unless you've been directly affected by something, then usually you don't want to stand up for a cause. That seems to be the way it is, and. Uh, I moved away from Xenia and I was aware of corruption going on there and they allow drug houses to continue to go on there and I don't want in the middle of that so I moved to Yellow Springs and then I found out from the Yellow Springs the police department that one of the stalkers that was following me around after I left Xenia uh, lives in Yellow Springs which is disturbing because there's so many good people there and I just I moved here to be safe and all I wanted to do is stay out of the corruption. I, I know there's a, there's a corrupt lawyer that's involved with this uh, that's in Montgomery County, and I'm not naming any names, but uh, I, uh, hopefully those, those people that have a lot of money and uh, are involved with corruption can look past uh, people that, that unintentionally happen to be nearby a drug house and moved away, and also like unintentionally um, upset a lawyer because I didn't hire him for a wrongful death and they could have made a lot of money from me but they was angry with me and I didn't want to hire them so um, I don't think anybody would want to hire somebody that's impatient and angry with you so uh, hopefully they can see that in their hearts to forgive me for uh, you know any kind of offense because obviously they're <clears throat> tied in with organized crime which is a I, I became aware of how how big that is um, after experiencing uh, organized stalking. So I uh, thank everybody for listening and uh, have a nice day. Thanks, Wayne. Anybody else? Just a couple of things. Stay, give us your Laura Curlis, Yale Springs. Hey, Laura. Hey. Um, I'm aware that the, that this culture of aggressive policing is still ha is still happening, despite this commission form. That they are still in an organized way doing it, and the older officers are teaching the newest, I believe, the newest officer we have, aggressive policing. I'm aware that they set they set up a um, a traffic trap at one of our most difficult intersections, Elm and Stafford, where stopping at that stop sign is truly an art and the sight lines are no good, and there's no stopping block there, and blah, blah, blah. Um, stopped a senior citizen with no, no traffic tickets for 20 years, gave that senior citizen a, not a warning, but a ticket. No reason to do that, local person. That person would be me. And I said, why don't you just give me a warning? Use your discretion. I haven't had a traffic ticket for a bazillion years, you know. I'm not exactly somebody who's running out here to run stop signs, you know. The sight lines are terrible, you have to pull up, you know, block. And then I said to the officer, are you going to send this to Xenia, or are you going to send it to Mayor's Court? He said, well, Mayor's Court. And inside, I'm thinking, you certainly should send this to our mayor's court instead of seeing you. But I had to worry that he wasn't going to do the right thing. That's still going on. Despite, we've got a problem with officers teaching aggressive policing, continuing to, rather than policing to change behavior, policing to give people tickets when it's really not necessary, you know. Then the next message I want to bring, and for the people particularly interested in Civilian Review Board, this is kind of interesting. I spent the past week at Chautauqua, New York, those of you who know how that works, knows there's 45 people, 100 people in the audience for their major spe speakers. One of their major speakers was Jelani Cobb, author and journalist, great, great man. He was asked in the Q&A, the very first question is, what would you, what's the one thing you would do to change policing culture in this country? You know what his answer was? Civilian review board. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Lord. Anybody else? Anyone, anyone else? Well, this is here from Ken. Oh, yeah. Okay. If you respond to everybody, we're not going to get to the right Okay, is that all right? Yeah. Go ahead, Ken. 
give us your full name. Ken Ovi Orn. I'm uh, uh, very happy to hear of the uh, suggestion uh, made by Kempflin uh, uh, to have a standing committee. Um, I'm interested in, in hearing more uh, of the details and the terms of that, the extent to which uh, that board would be privy to uh, sensitive information, what it would do with that information. Uh, um, so I, I'd, like to, I'd like to hear more about that and, and soon I hope you'll be developing that. Um, I, I too, with, with the other witnesses here, uh, believe that um, the, an appropriate response and, um, is, needs to be forthcoming. And, uh, I'm concerned that uh, the, the outlook of uh, we the privileged uh, are, are really not uh, grasping the nature of the problem and that we may believe that uh, simple retraining or changes in policy or regulation uh, will suffice. Um, uh, I think that there's a, a cultural problem here that needs to be addressed and perhaps um, a group with, with the powers of this uh, uh, oversight board, uh, if it were strong enough, uh, could alleviate uh, some of those issues. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Uh, anybody else? Oh, okay, Pam. I, I would like to respond to uh, what much, many of the people said. I am very frustrated by, uh, I mean, we've done some wonderful things by how they know uh, Mrs. Randolph. Uh, and we've done, but we have, considering how long we've been going, we, we have come to very little of the mayor's uh, subgroup has worked so hard. And it, it, the problem that I see it is that we, we, then we're formed by the council. And so we send things to the council and the council doesn't do anything. The, all the chief has to stand up and say, make some remark on the the council says, oh, okay, you know, let disregard all the work that the uh, Justice System Task Force has done. And we're not, we're headed for another New Year's Eve uh, incident. And to, to, to some degree, the problem stems, after New Year's Eve, we got rid of the chief, okay, obviously. But the two, the two next in command, the two uh, sergeants, are still the same sergeants. The same, and they are, the, they are, pushing that mentality that, that the speakers have been talking about. And it's our responsibility, I, as I, that was one of the reasons I wanted to be on here, to, ch to change that, to get community policing, to change the mentality of the whole thing. The, the consul, in my opinion, uh, the exception of maybe the two to my left, has, has not stood up for what needs to be done. Uh, one the chief or says some oh okay we'll you know we'll do whatever you say uh, the, we need some leadership and you can see that the the one some of the officers that reflect the community values they are on the verge of being fired from our police street of force <clears throat> which is just going to make things worse and and if this con continues we are going to have another New Year's Eve incident. And I, I am sort of come around to the, the fact we need a citizen review board that is independent of the council that can do things because the council really is not listening to what we say in general, a few things, but uh, something needs to be done. Could I touch upon one of the things that you said? Well, sure. Let's, I just do want to suggest that we keep this part of it short because we do have a whole yeah. agenda and we one can... Minute. Right. Yeah. And it'll, it'll, one minute. One minute. Um, it's just on what you had said about getting the uh, community outreach specialist on board. Everything that we have been doing here is a super long process. So it was actually already in motion. I've been pushing and working on this for five years. So it's been a very long five years. So I, I just want to point that out. Like it did happen quickly within this group, but I've been a broken record for five years. So I understand the people that stand up here and, and talk about what they want because I was standing alone for three years. So I, I just want to point that out. That things take a long time and it's very frustrating, but things can get done. Squeaky wheel.
and, and you know, the place that we're really going to be able to dig into this is when we get to the priorities conversation here, because that's obviously sort of you know, yeah. a critical thing. Okay, we're ready to move on? Everybody good? Yeah. I support to some extent what Al is saying. Um, I think that you know, one thing that continues to be frustrating to me is that there isn't a, there hasn't been that I have seen evidence of some sort of plan from council as to what to do with the recommendations. And I think what this ended up with is it's a piecemeal response. People are working on things which I think is good, but there needs to be a more coordinated response to what it is that we're doing. Uh, and uh, because the, that dilutes the effect of them. And there are, there are gaps uh, that don't get filled. That's all I have to say. All right, thanks. Okay, moving on to uh, the next. We're ready for working group reports and no, no, we're going to, we were going to switch to the other four. Yeah, but we're going to deal with the surveillance issues will be the first. Right. Oh, okay. 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 So, and, and so if you would, in your hymnal, turn to, I think we're like number, oh, no, we're already, just we're already behind schedule. Do you want to take time off this 20 minutes that you said it's like working group reports? I'll do that myself. All right. So starting on, it looks like page four, you'll find the uh, the actual document that we passed last time. And then before or after it, you will find the only two comments that I'm aware of, and there may be others, and then we'll ask the viewer for the others here tonight. Uh, we have a comment from, uh, you see the notice. We have a comment from Patty. She likes it. Uh, she has a question about uh, dealing with emergency situations and she wants to have a small change about uh, whether or not you would have a special meeting. Uh, instead, she'd like to see dealt with that at a council meeting. All right. I wondered if you could take two sentences to explain what this surveillance recommendation is because there are people here who you know. So the, so the idea is that uh, there's, so, there's so many new surveillance technologies Departments all over the country are adopting, and they're very seductive, and they're getting cheaper all the time. And we don't want to see our police department just either intentionally adopting or accidentally adopting any of them without going to council and actually getting an affirmative vote to do so. And so, basically, what this is all about, it doesn't rule on any of these possible surveillance technologies. It just says, look, if you want to do it, you've got to write a report that describes what it is, how it will work, how you want to use it the possible downside of using this, bring it to council and give council a chance to say yay or nay to your specific proposal. Council can then also change the specific proposal. No, you can't use it in these circumstances, you can only use it in these circumstances. Uh, and then there are reporting mechanisms built in, so on an annual basis you get a report on to what extent they've actually done this. They've used this sort of thing. So that's really the, the essence of this particular proposal. It's all about empowering council and through the council, the community, to know what kind of surveillance technology is being used and to have a say or have the ability to approve or disapprove the use of that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, and so we've got these, these, you know, basically supportive comments both from um, our city manager and from the village solicitor, I would say. And I'm totally comfortable with all of their suggestions. I think we could easily, easily accommodate everything that they suggest here. She suggests taking out one meeting and just assigning to village council, and that's just a small edit. Uh, and she suggests uh, an emergency clause, and I drafted an emergency clause that I can pass around that we could just simply throw in at some point. It doesn't really matter where you put it in there. So here would be a possible emergency clause, and I think, I hope it would address what Patty is concerned about. Steve, tell me what you think since you're also in the committee. Or both. I don't know. There's the notion don't... that in an emergency there might be a need to use some stuff. Use some stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not allowing, and that it would be short term is the recommendation. Yeah, right. That's what the recommendation is. I think um, we accept it. Okay. <laughs> and, and now the <laughs> you like this as do I. Uh, I just wish I knew what the this is what I was trying to ask the uh, why opposed to the term ordinance that they'd rather have resolution or act. So I just wanted to know that's I just wanted to know 
I never got a chance to actually get a response from that, but I was just curious as to so really that was, what was the what was their issue with the match on that? So that was Chris's most substantive concern. He yeah, basically was said, it looks like good to me, else, yeah. uh, but maybe you want to do it as a uh, resolution as a rather than a resolution. Right. Uh, you know, can you, anybody? There is a, there's an ordinance book, and he said, uh, I don't know where it would go, so maybe it's easier to do a resolution. Yeah. I mean, it's all but legislative. Is it still, I, is it binding? No it's still binding. So okay. I, I would, I don't care how we do it, and I thought he'll well, tell us this, but yeah, yeah, I saw your question, less. I don't really know. I think yeah. staff can let us know. And if there's any difference, I mean, you, I don't think there is a difference. I mean, I, the word ordinance, in my mind, conjures law, resolution, conjures something slightly less significant than law, but that may not be the way Chris is thinking about it. I don't know. But you don't typically have a book of resolutions that you go to to find out what the law is. You go to your book of ordinance. Is it the case that the resolutions are, tend to be more internal, like internal regulations, and the ordinances tend to be more externally facing? Uh, well, yellow you know what? Too. I see what you mean, but when this comes to council, yeah, we'll talk right. about it. I mean, we want it to be minded, uh, yeah. sure. and so I don't know. So it's a policy. Resolutions are policies. Ordinance books. The problem is it gets updated only once a year, and so in terms of getting it out there to the public, is is more difficult. I mean, this surveillance thing is a policy. It has the force of law in the sense that they have to follow it if you, if you know, and people, employees are subject to discipline if they don't follow the policy. But you're right, it has a, it, uh, ordinances have definitely a, a, a heavier sense of uh, responsibility because when we do ordinances, just by the, by the process, we do two readings and then they don't go into effect for 30 days. But exactly what's the difference? I don't actually know. Well, it sounds like just harder, more expensive, time consuming, et cetera, to make it an ordinance versus make it pass a resolution. Well, we can find yeah. out, but I think we'll. Yeah, and what Chris says is um, if we pass as an ordinance, we're going to need to find a place in the code, but I don't yeah. think that's going to be a problem. Yeah, he says so. so yeah. Okay. So why not go with the ordinance? I just had a little stop about what Chris said about. Okay, we, we're clear that we don't want um, indiscriminate surveillance against citizens in general, but specific individuals, there might be a reason that we would have a drone follow them. Or, okay, I'm not really sure without imagining this, the uh, technology, but I could imagine that there could be some surveillance tool that we oppose that is then used against an individual. Or is that not a big enough thing to worry about? Well, I mean, the first the village would have to acquire that. And to acquire it, they have to acquire that particular technology using this policy. Okay. Okay. If they've acquired it and they want to, and say the policy is we, we use this for street fair, uh, you know, whatever it is, X, Y, Z, we use it for street fair. But now we want to use it to follow you home at night. Mm -hmm. Presumably, given the way the Supreme Court decisions, they will actually need a a search warrant to do that. Okay. Uh, and so what he's simply saying is this doesn't interfere with the ability of the police to get a warrant using whatever appropriate technology for a specific reason. They have to go to a judge and show them a probable cause to get a warrant. And then they can do what they want to do. But they won't even have the, the, the technology available unless they go through this particular Plus, the, the, there's the emergency thing, which my example was uh, like Amber Alerts. Like those licensed right. state, like the license trackers have been, like, you know, especially if they know, like, it's another parent that's kid, like, they come in handy. They can just send them that and they can, it's, and so emergency use, that would kind of be that sort of quick decision, like, would it be used here? Most likely no, but if there was a reason for emergency, it's actually the case of an Amber Alert. Okay. This is what that emergency would be for the civilians. Sort of. uh, but beyond that, yeah, it's still be work. I mean, council would still have to say, all right. John, do you have a question or a comment? Well, well, I, have to to I don't think I've ever been a minutes left. Oh, sure. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been a minute. Thank you. Um, so, uh, 
in your um, draft amendment, um, you say where A, a state of emergency has been declared by the governor, B, if such an emergency presents an imminent risk to life, and C, the chief of police determines that the use of the an unapproved surveillance technology is necessary to the protection of life. Um, so all three of those, so basically a state of emergency by the governor and also to the That's chief. the way it's drafted, it can always be edited. Okay, so, so I would replace that with an or, um, and then I guess I would also draw the committee's attention to the fact that basically. No, 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 no. I mean, no, actually, you want the hand there. Because you want, it to, you want the objective standard that it actually does that. You don't just want the chief to be able to say it does that. So it sounds like you can only do this in a state of emergency that has been declared by the governor, correct? Yeah. And does that oh. fit the Amber Alert? Yeah, I was wondering. Example? But I, I mean, of course, feel free to disagree with the village manager, but I, my guess is that when she said emergency situations, she just meant like, oh, we're investigating these people and we actually need this technology right now in order to know. We don't know what she meant, and so we, I just tried to come up with something that seemed to accommodate the idea of an emergency. You know, and, I mean, honestly, because all I all I know is what you see in front of you. Well, the Amber I mean, Alert, I think yeah. that's that the if someone kidnapped someone or in the house. The Amber Alert, or, you're talking about the licensing stuff? Well, it's just like it's a piece of surveillance that would be used to help. I know. I'm, I'm, they're already so. using that just to say. Um, Where we have it here. We are, yeah. We have we already, it. But so we already have it. it. It's already being used on a very regular basis <laughs> as, the, as the police officer drives down the street. So, um, but but according to this te this policy, they're going to have to bring that yes. they use that technology to the council. The council will have to sign up. Yeah, you can use it, and they'll bring it to you, and they'll say, "This is how we're going to use it," and you'll get to say, "That sounds good," or "That doesn't sound." Good. And so let's say you come up with some use that's like, you're going to use it on Saturday afternoon. Let's just say that's what the policy is. Okay? Uh, but now they've got an Amber Alert they want to use it on Wednesday evening. Then this theoretically might kick in and do it. And so we can, we can restructure this so you don't actually have to have a, uh, a, governor. a governor thing. But I think you both want the uh, emergency and the, uh, and the police to sign it. Risk to life. So I'll, I'll just, if you'll trust me to, to change the, um, what was the, what do you call it, the hand list of the speaker? What does it? The hand what? What? Amber alert? Well, if you'll trust me to just fix the grammar, I'll probably go ahead. Okay. <laughs> so, not to be you know, nitpicky, but when she's risking my life by running a stop sign, evil. Is. Don't, we, don't, <laughs> don't we don't we don't we want the chief to be able to say hey barely go follow her because she's probably doing that of course and and, 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 <laughs> yeah, and, this, and, and then if uh, I'm just driving down the street and uh, somebody feels like it they can also say follow him he might go run the same stop sign this doesn't yeah, but this, that's not involving surveillance in any way that's breaking a law that's that's I'm, I'm just a little stop concerned stop. about saying you know, if the if the chief decides it's okay then go do it we're talking about putting things in language that says talks about discretion. I'm just I'm I'm just wondering. I'm not coming down one side or another. I'm, I'm concerned about you know putting too much to saying here your behavior is circumscribed, but you have discretion to do whatever you want. Sort of defeats the purpose. Um, so I mean, like to be clear, the um, village solicitor. Um, says that he wants to clarify that JSTF is focused solely on the idea of preventing indiscriminate wholesale surveillance without particularized probable cause against an individual. That is on one side of the extreme here, which is basically like, we should be able to use surveillance technology as long as we have probable cause. The other side of the extreme is we can use surveillance technology to protect life. Um, in between that, you know, you, you could say like, you can use surveillance technology if council approved. I mean, in emergency situations. Sorry, within emergency. That like, um, you can use unapproved things in emergency situation if the chief declares it and then informs council about it at the next meeting. Like, you know, like, but you know, supposing that there's an ongoing investigation and like, 
you need it, but it's not actually, it has to do with like life threatening. You just feel like it's human trafficking or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, the theory that could be going, I, I don't know. Maybe, I, I don't know if you guys are looking at me like I have two heads here, but like, in theory, there are other crimes that they use surveillance technology for in a legitimate fashion that they might need on the spur of the moment that don't threaten. Yeah, so all, all that actually has to happen is when, when, they, when, they, when they ask to use a particular when they ask to use a particular technology, it simply says, you know, this is how we would use it as a general matter, and we would use it in any instance where there is a individualized investigation and or a warrant or whatever, and they'll come up with a, some standard language that would be part of any package request for any particular technology. And, I, and I, I think that will cause the police. I mean, so that gets you, Steve, you know. That gets your concern. So if you're doing the license plate reader, the approval for license plate reader would simply say, right in the approval, it would say, or if there's a certified Amber Alert, you know, that, you know, and you can use it within the window for the Amber Alert. And, and then the council gets to say, yeah, you're not. Um, I mean, obviously the way it's being used is, I'm looking at every license plate that goes by, and oh, I see that you've got a suspended license, right. or I see that your but that's license what we can has. Stop for this. <laughs> what is it? That's what we can stop with. Is that yeah. you can say? Okay, that but now we're looking for the Amber Alert. In the meantime, I see a person who has an expired license or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, does that mean it can only be used to identify the Amber Alert person? And now they've seen an expired Fired license person, but they cannot act on that piece of information. We're trying to solve problems that are kind of downstream. So, at least the way I see it, this provides a structure for making those decisions. Mm -hmm. The police can or they can't, okay. and council gets to decide that in each and every case that a surveillance technology comes across our village doorstep. I do want to say, because I wasn't in the last discussion, I very much support the idea of really having oversight. So I'm, so I was just sort of trying to sort of yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And was there an opportunity for the chief to do yeah, that? Was yeah, I, yeah, I, I had coffee with the chief after he had it. He said he didn't have a lot of time to study it. Uh, at the point we had coffee, he said he didn't have any outstanding concerns. Um, then he did have a chance to study it, and he didn't get back to me. So. Well, I made clear to Patty that it was not to happen, <laughs> that we make a recommendation, and in the council packet is a response that we never got that says, well, no, I'm not for that. Staff, we need to hear from staff ahead of time. So, if that should happen again, that would be a problem, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. 
No? I very much apologize for speaking so many times. Um, my, my underlying concern here, which I think I've already put out, is that I think that while you're trying to respond to their concerns, that you guys are ships passing the night, and that were they to get this document, they would just have more specific responses. Um, I could be wrong, but um, I guess I don't feel like it would do too much damage, even though I'm sure the committee won't support me in this, I'm gonna do it anyway, uh, to just refer it back to committee, to talk to staff about it, and bring it back to the next meeting. Like, nobody seconds my motion, I'm sure. But anyway, there's my motion, to refer it back to committee. No, I'm sorry. I'm confused. Oh, to refer well, back let to me, Let me try to say it. Yeah. Okay, so we have, we have this document that folks have looked at, yeah. but the recommendation is that there needs to be an emergency clause inserted into it. Mm -hmm. So that paragraph goes into this. Uh, no, well, I'm just saying that's, that's where we started. That's, that's where we started, started right? Yeah. right. Uh, that, that, that paragraph modified slightly so that it doesn't need, like, God to appear and the governor to do something, right? So, well, you know, actually, I would leave it just as it stated because I actually think you can take care of everything else just in, in the way you draft your request to use a particular right. This is actually a real emergency clause. Right. So, I what I don't understand is if, if that emergency clause is inserted into this document, what what's going back to someone else to read again? I hear John saying that. The can John respond? I'm sorry. I thought he already said it. No, I, I want to clarify what he oh, said. Oh, uh, I mean, my sense is that this isn't. I'm just not sure what staff would say in response to this. I just don't know. And I basically, I'm just curious what staff would say. When you say staff, who do you mean? I mean, I'm not sure what Patty Bates and the village solicitor would say in response to this. To this, if they, they would be like, oh, yeah, so this is exactly oh, so, what we're asking. So, you're, so what you're saying is that before it goes to council. I just like to. No, let me just try to say it. Before it goes, to, what you're saying is that before it goes to council, the 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 document amended with this addition should be looked at by Patty and Chris and maybe the chief one more time before it goes to council to avoid the risk that the new addition will create a reaction that's like, oh, we haven't seen that part. Essentially, yes. So not go back to committee, it would go back to just run it by Patty and Chris really quickly to make sure they're comfortable. So we would pass it, according to what I hear you saying, so we would pass it out of here, but on its way to council it stops by Patty and Chris and the chief. I mean, it's going to happen anyways, right? And then it goes to council, and council decides what they want to do. do we have well, I guess the reason that I said we go back to committee, no. the reason that I said refer back to committee is that the surveillance group knows this document. They might talk to those people, and they might be like, "We," th and those people might be like, "Hey, this is how we think you should change it." They could be like, "Okay, great, cool. We're on the same page here. We'll bring it back to JSDF. Here it is. Why JSDF sends have it back to council." Or alternatively, they might talk to those people and be like, "Okay, we understand what your opinion is now. We totally disagree with you. We'll take it back to JSDF, explain your opinion, but then explain why we're actually right, and then JSDF can decide." I just okay, was okay. the reason for the refer is just to get their opinion. All right, John. Um. I don't, I, I, I have a concern that recommendations and other documents are getting caught in a kind of endless swirl mm -hmm. here. Yes. And I think it's important to get public comment. Um, I think that's a great part of this process, but to have every edit slows things down. And we need a process that um, gains traction. I won't be here next month, quite frankly. So uh, I'm not. Gonna, I have no desire to have it come back to our local committee unless Steve's, to, you know, wants to. I didn't get a second on the question, so I think that it's not going to be. I, I, I want to make a second, actually, um, on that. Uh, in uh, You're seconding my previous. Or my John. Or John's. Oh, okay. And my point is this, yes, this swirl thing, well, it wouldn't be happening if this had been drafted, this emergency thing, and it had been shared with them again, and then we would gotten their final say on it. What I don't want to do is have it to come to council. We're not as versed in all of this. And then there's, and then staff says, well, really, we'd like to change it this way. And then our experts are not there. And then we're trying to sort it out at the council. It's just that one paragraph, though, the emergency clause. 
the rest they've already seen. It's just okay, an, well, maybe it's, it's not an effort to make Hattie's poorly articulated concerns. And, and, you know, I mean, if you, if it needs to be edited, then so be it. I mean, okay. you know, it's just the legislative process. People change stuff up to the last minute. I expect that, quite frankly. I mean, it's just the way it we don't want to go through too much of that effort because we got a lot of stuff. I, to do. I just kind of want to hear what Steve thinks. Oh, right. Um, so, once again, yeah, like we, we made sure that it went through and people saw it. The one thing that they requested was this. Jacob's like, look, I found what is a very typical emergency clause. Here it is, you know, basically now. And now the question is, is this okay? And it's like, well, wow. yeah, sometimes it's, uh, yeah, this can be fixed when we can talk. But I, yeah, I do feel like it's just constantly this push against anything being done. It's, so you'd like to add it and go? Uh, I, yeah, I'd like to add it. And, um, uh, you know, once we can, I don't think these are difficult to, um, have council and staff talk amongst themselves if there is concern, or even if we just said we've heard there's been a concern about these things. Therefore, that might be a concern you have with this recommendation. The, the concept that we have to come in there with every period and I doubt it is uh, frustrating. I mean, they could throw it back. They did it with the mayor's court. Okay, I'm going to move so. to, just in the interest of giving the discussion along, I'm going to move my own question, if that's all right. That we take a vote on it. All right. So we're now voting on the question whether this should come back to the committee before, and then come back to this group before we send it on to council. If you vote, and just to be clear, if you vote yes on it, it does that. If you vote no on it, then we'll decide on it tonight. And if we vote for it, it will go directly to council. When you say that, <coughs> what do you mean? As amended, the proposal as amended. Right. Vote on it tonight. Okay. So the thing I moved in the first place. Yes. Exactly. So just, so first, we have to vote on this. But just a quick question. I think for me, there's an in between, and that is that you have this with this email from Patty and Chris. Is there any reason not to just add, if we choose to add that paragraph, just say, okay, we added this paragraph. Here's another copy, Patty and Chris, with that paragraph in. Take a look at it because we're bringing it to council. I mean, which is different than just not sending it back to them after that paragraph's added. Sure. But first, we got to dispatch this idea that it comes back to, to the subcommittee and then back to this group. So, um, the question's been moved. All in favor of making it go, make, not making it sound as unpalatable as possible. <laughs> Anybody, all in favor of forcing it to go back to the subcommittee before forcing it to come back to the committee, uh, vote aye. Aye, <laughs> aye. Right, right. And then everybody else. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, we're having a side conversation, and, and you're missing the okay. point. All in favor of it. forcing it to go back to the subcommittee before coming back to this committee before going on. Uh, opposed? Uh, aye. Aye. Okay. All opposed? No. 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 All right. So we won't do that. Okay. So now we're ready. To, now we're ready to take a vote on how to move this forward. And the proposal is to move it forward as amended, and uh, the uh, then the end allowing for time for all of the interested parties to weigh in before it actually gets to council. As, as amended. Yes. As yeah. amended. Right. And is it on the agenda for council this week, next week, Monday? No. No, we don't turn it around that quick. Right. And so then council's off the first week in August. It'll be so this is the end of August. It would go to council. So mm -hmm. that should give sufficient time for staff review. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's the proposal. David, is that, is that an accurate statement? Yeah, to it, yeah. Yeah, okay, so we have this in it. It will accommodate Patty's other suggestion about changing how the meetings address things. Uh, and and we will leave plenty of room for staff comment. Uh, Dave Turner moved it. Yeah, yes. is there a second? And a second. Okay. second. Okay. Will it stay in ordinance? I think that's what we're suggesting. Yeah, let's, let's we want put it forward as an ordinance, right? Yes. Okay, okay. all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Any uh, abstentions? Okay. All right. So who's that? All right. Is everybody good? Is anybody in the break? So just send me the final. Yeah, I'll, I'll do the end tomorrow. I'll send it to you. I'll add this in tomorrow. Yeah.
Okay, uh, we're ready for the, well, we're ready for the JT, JSTF priorities, the remainder of the one uh, okay. and other people have given this more than thought than I, so I'm more than happy to have somebody sort of take the reins of this particular piece, but I would suggest that maybe the first part of the conversation is us figuring out how long uh, the remainder of our life is. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know if you had read uh, what I wrote, <laughs> you would know that it's still the end of the year. December. So say you. <laughs> <laughs> you would read it. But, um, but just to say the Justice System Commission recommendation, my hope is that that would be in place to kind of follow the footsteps of the task force. Um, but the recommend that. So anyway. Well, do, do you want to walk us through this I was not here when you when people decided to do this process, and I still don't get it. Yeah, I think I think you right. we we had as working groups, we each came up with goals, and that's what we're working on our goals. Right. Yeah. So if you were to say, well, none of our goals have any priority, I guess we just take a break. I know we're <laughs> always going to put our thing we're working on as priority. Yeah, so I don't get so what we're doing. So really. it's but, not clear to me. Hey, I don't know. What? <laughs> People keep pointing it back. So <laughs> I, 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 I think you all are pointing at me because I have created several versions of this document. But um, the person who first had this idea uh, was Dave. And that was several months ago when, given this body is going to end at the end of the calendar year, it was still maybe six, seven months. Nine, ten, twelve. But because time has passed, we're down now to probably four months. April, yes. And um, and I think we have to think about it in that light. But the idea was, yes, the subcommittees have decided on their tasks and goals. Uh, is it valuable to step back and take a bigger picture look at all of the work that's being done and uh, think about whether there are some topics here that we all agree are so important that we want as a body to push those forward. That's the way I think about it, at least. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. That's a, that's a good summation. And, and as you're saying, Judith, something's going to happen in the future no matter what with this effort. And, Nobody that's working on that effort, I'm sure, is going to say, to help what happened in the past, we're going to create something new. So this, I can see, is a valuable you know, set, of, or set of guides for a list of things to, to do, guidance for, you know, for future efforts. And I don't see how it, that it would take you know, too much time uh, to do it. And it's also not something that's going to be carved in stone. Um, so if something else comes up which is considered more important, if something, you know, gets taken care of and therefore isn't, you know, the list changes. But I think it's important to have some priorities. This also came up because of the <coughs> advisory and review board that the community has was picking up so constantly about and the concept that we didn't have that as a priority and that some people were saying maybe it's not, and others were saying maybe it definitely should. The question was, is it? Yeah. And that started the conversation of what Will our priorities be going into whether this continues or not? And I, the, the, let's not forget that that really was sort of the um, major push for the concept of going over what we're going to prioritize, what we'd like to prioritize individually, and then as a group, what we agree with or disagree with. Sure. So, so are we in agreement that there's some purpose in having this conversation? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> let's say, well, let me give an example. We all, we all uh, feel that it's too bad we haven't had the attention and energy to look at drug control. We all think that that is an issue, a significant issue. Well, we all have some things we're already doing. I mean, who's going to, we say, oh, that's a priority before the next few months. Who's going to do it? Raise your hand. So, no, you can do it. No. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So, occasionally new, like, old groups end, and then occasionally new groups begin, and when people are like, oh, I want to help out, maybe start a new working group, then they'll be like, oh, what are your priorities? How is this nobody currently working on? And then also, when you're creating an agenda, and there's like 
things that seem equally important. And I'd be like, oh, but actually on our priorities list, like modification of mayor's court is number one. So we're going to put those things up on the agenda to make sure that they get dealt with. So those are the two uses I see. Creating new, new groups. When you create a new group, work, when you create a new subcommittee, have it focused on high priorities. When you create an agenda, maybe have that sort of influence the agenda. Or and we would so, so, hey guys, and we're, we're going to spend that. all our time talking about whether we're going to talk about this. So I'm going to suggest <laughs> we actually like jump right in and talk. Yeah, yeah that was it. Okay. Okay. Let, let's just go down the list. Let's yeah. just, just go down and raise your hand. How many votes should we have? Uh, well, let's have a conversation first because it does seem that it's very important that, that people are going to have to say who's going to do it. Because, I mean, I think we just illustrated that. You know, it's not just we're like, we're not assigning it to somebody who's not here. Yeah. Somehow, it, you know, if, if this group is taking on as a priority, you need to be prepared to talk about how you're suggesting that it's going to get done. So, why don't we maybe mm -hmm. go around the room and have everybody comment on the stuff that they Wait. really think is important and how? No. That I, we're already doing most of these things one way or another. Some of them uh, are uh, things that we haven't spent much time on. And we've been doing priority choosing already by having some things that we talk about, like surveillance is a priority this time. Mm -hmm. So that sort of bubbled up and appeared. If we go through and we pick some of these things, then we can fast track those. Uh, I think if we pick too many in a, in a meeting we talked about initially, most a lot of people weren't here. Figure if we if we pick three things uh, to be top priorities, and then the next three things down are the ones that will you know go up and replace those. I suggest that we approach it that way. If everybody picks three things that they think are priority, we can real quick pass around. Then we will have a list of you know a bunch of things that are going to be not important if not considered as much of a priority and then take the resulting list and do it again quickly and pretty soon very quickly you're going to have a small number of things that are going to rise to the top i'm more than happy to, to run it that way and why are you going to start there well i would just say you know if you want to we've got 13 things on this list on page 13 you know, appropriately enough uh, so I would say everybody would take a you know take, take a pass through if you haven't already and, and, and select three things you think are you know, the most important to work on first. Well, Dave, I'm asking you to articulate the three that you're most interested in. Oh, and then we'll go around the room and give everybody a chance to do that. Right. Just, well, I think just a couple of little lines about why you should not a whole speech. Well, I think that we should fix the quick and important stuff soon uh, and then work on the longer term things that are going to take longer later and consequently. You know, mayor's court, I and mean, that's one of my favorites, of course, on bias, but that's something that's already in the works. Uh, we can knock that one out. Um, police discretion is something that's important to work on because it covers a whole lot of territory. Oh, what what number? Call it. Three, four, and three, and eight, public engagement. Because there are a lot of issues people are concerned about that we're talking about and not engaging the public in. It's just people come to meetings and say, I'm upset, and that's not public engagement. This is going to take too long to have everyone go. And I suggest we just go down and, uh, and people, number one, and you people raise their hand, they can raise their hand three times, and we uh, we can't Absolutely. have every person go we do it detail about why they think these are priorities. So we're going to be here until 10 o'clock. Is this Maybe. not paying, I mean, is this not taking into account what's already being worked on? Because many of these are already being worked on. Yeah, I think, like I think we're just, we're just trying to sort of just see how we feel about this. Let's not overanalyze no, see what this I think tells us. Alice, I think that's something. an important question, and I, and I, and I think I can answer it quickly. What we did is look at all the things. We had everybody sent to Beth all the things they're working on. So assuming everybody did that, we started with that big list. And we looked at the charter from the uh, council initially and then added things that we didn't see in that list. And that's what this is. Okay. So it's a compilation. I'm happy to do it your way out. I don't care. I just want us to yeah, do this. I, okay. I am too. You think you're okay. comfortable with doing it now as well? What I was going to do is get rid of some, since we need to get rid of some. We can't do 13. Well, if we pick the top ones, then the ones that are critical uh, immediately here. And, and say the ones that I'm going to work on, because I don't know how else to do it. I mean, I'm already working on it. No, no. All right, no. So no. Now I want to There's say no say working here. This yeah. is just a priorities list. What I want to say here is, as I've worked with this list and, um, and um, like, boiled it down, 
It started out being three pages, so now it's 13 <laughs> big topics. And when I look at this list, the only, it, I think these are all important. And in fact, maybe what this is, is a framework for the commission that you're beginning to work uh, on describing. And they're all, they're all important. I don't want to take anything off this list. Well, I'm just talking about for the next few months. I'm not talking about the future. It's just there are things we haven't been looking at, and I don't think we're going to do them in the next few months. I agree That's with all that. I'm I agree with that. We, we're this is running out of time. This is a priority until the end of the year. Okay. And obviously, we'll inform the rec a recommendation about it. Well, we'll we'll go ahead. Ahead. Let's do a house thing, and then let's see what that tells well, wait, us. Okay. Wait, wait, there is another way, though. We don't actually need to remove any of these things. We could just do instead of not voting, and everybody could just prioritize all the things, and then we could just tally it up later. That's what else. That's I was a saying. much more complicated way. Yeah. There is a much more complicated way in which you don't do vote splitting. I'm just saying. Okay, if you're about, there, I will call out, I'll say like, uh, we're one, so, and if that's one of your three, <laughs> you'll raise your hand. Right. And you're okay? going to count, and I'm going to write down. Yeah. Okay, is, is that okay? okay. And like so that. everybody's everybody's on their yeah. best behavior. Only three votes. Right. Three votes. And you can <laughs> put all, you can <laughs> multiple votes on the same one if you want to. That's how multi voting works. Four. Uh, In other words, if I want to put all of my three votes on one, I can do that. Uh, all right. <laughs> All right. All right, everybody. Okay, let's number one. Number one. If this is like at the top of your your list. Raise your hand. Okay. You see one for the whole one. Number two. Number two. Okay, not seeing any there. Okay. Number three. I'm seeing three votes. Okay. Number four. Six votes. Seven votes. Seven. Are you voting? I'm voting. Seven votes. Okay. Uh, uh, number five. Four. Four votes. Okay. Well, that's, that was that was that's not a priority. That was that was that's, that's, that's happening. Priority. I mean, really, that's just the, the so proposal to go on as an ongoing commission. Yeah. yeah. It's so, totally not. I mean, that's very good. That's happening. That's happening. Yeah. That's happening. That's so we're so that went out. So yeah. put that in a circle. Uh, <laughs> six advisory review boards. This is specifically to the police review board. Um, and so we got two, seven more, six, seven. So this is. No, this I, I want to make sure this is more broadly stated than a citizen yes, review. Right. But it includes. It includes that. Okay. Right. How many votes do we have? Seven. 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 So all, all but three. Police training. That's number seven. There was a final report on that work. I mean, there's still, obviously, there can be more things, but I would consider it closure. Which one? Well, Pat, come on. Let's, we can't get, let's just keep moving forward. Okay, we're on number seven. We're so close to the end. Number eight, public engagement. Have they used up their votes already? Number nine, data analysis, citations, whatnot. That's I see two. Number ten, data analysis. Um, hey, you're going for more than you should. Only yeah. 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 three votes, people. It's hard to pick. <laughs> well, really? Uh, number eleven, drug um, control. I'm sorry. How many did we have for two? Two. Thank two. You. Thank you. Number eleven, drug control. Two. Two. Okay, number 12, impact on the poor. Five. Five. Okay, and number 13, I don't know if there's anything left. Well, well it's just like I put my hand in Well, we don't know. I just thought that we brought down the mayor's court recommendation. Number one. Number 13. Oh, it's for 13. Yeah. That's close, right? I'm out of time. So Ben, why don't you pick out the numbers we like run? Okay, <laughs> topic one, we have one vote. Yeah, I think I got my one. Topic, well, you guys listen up. Hey, it's probably the end of the table. <laughs> <laughs> topic two, we had zero votes. Topic three, we had three votes. 
Topic four, we had seven votes. Okay. Topic five was taken off the table. Okay. Topic six, we had seven. Topic seven, we had one. Topic eight, we had zero. Topic nine, we had two. Topic 10, we had two. Topic 11, we had two. Topic 12, five. And 13, one. Okay, so that's interesting, huh? So, so clearly the top voters are mayor's court and advisory review boards. And then the third one is in fact on the board, right? Yeah, four, six, and 12. Yeah. Okay. So, I, I mean, it seems like it's incumbent upon us to have a conversation about those three items to talk about how they're going to move forward. Is that a fair way to What are they? They're, they're number four, number six, and number four, 12. Six and yeah. Well, I would suggest that we do that some other time because it's 8.30 and we still got a lot of other stuff to do unless we want to cut that stuff off. One of the things that's really you know, like, you know, you know, I, I'm sensitive to Julie's point that these are some of the bigger issues and some of them we haven't really started working on. Right. So I think what's really positive about this voting process is it gives you an indication of, in terms of the future of a permanent commission, what the real interests are for the future. I think that's a real positive outcome of that process. Are we comfortable moving on tonight yeah. to, the, to the rest of the agenda having accomplished something? Hang on a second. Okay, are we comfortable? Okay. Uh, John, do you want to go? Yeah, uh, thanks so much. How much time do I get to this morning? You get three minutes, but you don't have to use every second. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 I that's the case. Um, so, so, really, just want to acknowledge that um, the advisory review board was selected as one of the, the top three, uh, and I'm I'm really pleased that that was the case, and I think that that would be. Uh, goes to show that it is uh, the commitment of the Justices and Task Force as well as um, I think that it's um, been the topic that has received the most public comments in the history of the Justices and Task Force. I haven't I tallied them specifically, but I think that it's pretty fair to say. Um, and, you know, I also just wanted to um, mention that, that, you know, there's there's a lot of the individual priorities on here that um, the justice uh, that a task force uh, that a review board could address uh, and also um, several uh, items on the initial so you could call it a charter but the resolution that, that formed this group I mean besides the two um, uh, of, that relate to the mayor's court I think it's essentially every single priority that, that this task force was formed by a civilian review board could address including uh, new developments in municipal policing practices that address institutional racism, methods for ameliorating the dispute and desperate impact of the justice system practices on the poor, alternative municipal policy and policing approaches to drug control, best practices regarding police and youth, and, um, and best practices supporting police community relationships. Now, um, currently we have um, a, a breaking news story, uh, you could say, around the um, scapegoating, you could say, of Meister. Some believe this is scapegoating or retaliation. Now, the, the police officer Meister, um, regardless of what you might think of him, because not uh, certainly any police officer, not no, anybody is going to schedule up There is going to be some comment on the Meister thing later in the agenda. I just want to okay. go there. That's good. That's great to know. Um, just, you know, like um, recent, uh, just don't use up your last minute on it. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I mean, like, um, but yeah, whether it's, whether it's the Meister issue or the, the, you know, several other current events, but I think that, um, you know, according to his wife, she was uh, chased on the bike path. And. You know, is this about what we're. Yes, it is. It is because well, according to her testimony, really it was just recently. John, this really is a priorities comment, period. Okay. Well, we're going to discuss, and then you'll have a chance to. Yeah. No, yeah. you could just let me finish uh, my the, the three minutes that I have, and that is that um, I like she she was she said according to her she was chased on the bike path and there was. Um, failures and how that was addressed and she made a complaint against the officer that um, that, that um, 
Well, so I've been I've been interrupted like for, for about John, thirty seconds. Please, please 30, please 30, 30 seconds. I was interrupted. John, she John, she was chasing. Thank you for. I, I feel like I've been silenced in what I'm saying because what I had three minutes, but I, I get interrupted. To the agenda item. John, I'm, if you don't sit down, sorry, I will entertain a motion to dismiss the meeting, and we will be done. But he, thank you. I was I was thank interrupted. You. I was not given my public comment period, and I feel that that was inappropriate. Please sit down. Thank you. All right. Um, moving on. Um, does it, we've got a few more items. We could go back up to the working groups and work our way through them. I don't think any of them are going to be very long. I uh, could be wrong about that. I would like to hear about converting the JTSF to the Permanent City Commission, which is there, uh, which is after the working groups, the next thing. Would people be comfortable doing that next and then going up to the working groups? Is that okay? Well, could we have a quick update about where we are with Mayor's work? Is there a recommendation that is intended? Everything has been, you want to read your last time? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've, we've made every recommendation one way or another, and it's made it to the powers that be. And we it's saved two and a half years of village time the way yeah. it worked out. With the public defender? I mean, yeah, yeah, public defender. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. Right. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, so, Go ahead. So we're, we're just waiting for them to come back to us. OK. So are, 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 yes. you're good then with okay. rearranging the agenda a little bit more? OK, so let's deal with this converting. Then we'll come up and get the working group report. Uh, and then we'll have the agenda planning, and then we'll come forward. <laughs> Okay, converting JSTF to a permanent city commission, that would be Okay, I mean, there's uh, basically the idea is, um, uh, you know, commissions are ongoing committees. And uh, so I, I talked to Brian about, you know, using one of the current committees as kind of a model. He suggested the General Relations Commission. In terms of the way I see it is the legislation. I'm not talking about the committee mm -hmm. defense activity. Um, that the legislation that created it. Um, with commissions, they tend to have very broad uh, purposes. So I use the purpose, uh, so, so I did just use developed, and it, this is very much a draft, um, that the purpose statement I took from the council's current uh, 2018 goal around the justice system. So what I said is the Justice System Commission will continue the work of the Justice System Task Force. The commission shall be established to assist village efforts in establishing a model of the justice system that supports a just, safe, and welcoming community across race, age, economic status, sexual orientation, gender, identity, ethnicity, ability, and religion. The commission shall be committed with the village team and the community to support policies that are proactively anti-racist that would be the purpose statement. Our commissions have five to seven members. So I'm base, basing on that, so it would be a smaller committee. Um, and then the powers and duties, I just lifted it out of uh, the uh, powers, out of the JSTF kind of, you know, the, the uh, kind of direction we gave with the council had given the Justice System Task Force. You see that it's there. Um, I had some conversations. I had a conversation with Beth and a conversation so far with Lisa. Um, let's see if I can find those comments because I thought they had their, okay, let's see. Um, so to, uh, the primary purpose of the commission would be to make policy recommendations to village council and the mayor. Um, it would be a policy recommending committee, primarily, not. And when I was talking to Beth, her son, who's involved in, in police reform, if I understood it correctly, and, I'm, and uh, Lisa and I are going to try to have a conversation with him soon by phone, the strongest possible way to reform police departments is through policy or policy change. Uh, let's see. So one of the questions Lisa asked is, are there incomplete goals um, that are continue to be the goals of council? And the two I put there, because I just didn't think we're going to get very far this year, is alternative municipal policing approaches to drug control, clearly very important, and it's very impactful on the floor. Um, I had suggested that 
you know, a member of our police department, the mayor, for the mayor's uh, office and administration, be ex officio members. Lisa pointed out, often our commissions have a member of our staff who attends, but there is no ex officio. So I'm taking that out. I think we want to, I want to try to keep it to the way the other commissions function. Uh, I, I do feel like we're going to, um, you know, we want to, and we need to improve the relationship between, well, we need to have a good relationship between the commission um, and our police department and our mayor. One of the things Beth was telling me, her son says there are three legs to a school of it when you want to you want to make uh, justice system reform, which is the elected officials, the police department, and the citizens. And so we have to, you know, we've done what we've done these last two years. I think we've accomplished a lot in spite of the frustrating meetings we sometimes have. I think we've actually accomplished quite a lot for a commission. Um, but um, but I but that that uh, communication is not a strength that we have developed in the last two years. And I have been hearing people say we need to, you know, and so I think that's something we need to be thinking about, you know, cultural change, if we want to make culture, see culture change. And, you know, I think some of that is happening in our police department, but I think there's a sense that we want to, you know, community wants to be a part of that. And, um, Are you saying a police officer will be attended meetings? Well, so I'm just, I, I'm going to let staff decide. I mean, we're not, I'm not going to say in the recommendation. Why not? I mean, my, my research. They're not going to, oh, that they be a member? We have never had. Not they attend every meeting. Yes. One George of department, not a non voting police officer attends a meeting. Maybe it's even the same person every time, but they are there. Because they hear some of what we're talking about in terms of cultural change. And they have information, their point of view. I mean, I would, anyway, I would get off. And, and to clarify my feedback about the ex officio, it wasn't that they should, that we shouldn't have representatives from the police. It, it was that we need to have it be more of a collaboration. So just calling them ex officio, in other words, you get to sit in and listen, but you don't really have a say, didn't feel quite right either. I think what I said is I don't know exactly what it would look like, but we do consider. need to have some kind of inner rock. Yeah. 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 So okay. that's all I that's all I'm gonna right. say. I mean, so I'm just trying to um, so if there's any thoughts on, I mean I'm gathering input and I'm try to um, have a final, there's going to be a final recommendation coming to council in September, second meeting of September. Do you want some input tonight or do you just want to? Yes, that would be great. Okay, we'll spend a few minutes on that. Yeah. Right, right now I would, I, I, I would vote that we just stop the Justice System Task Force completely and not have a commission because I don't think it is working. Uh, one of the, you addressed one of the concerns. I've said from the very beginning we needed to have a police officer here uh, at meetings so that we could, so that they could get a sense of what, what we wanted them to do and that they were basically very disconnected uh, from the police department. So that part sounds good. But what I think we need is a, is some kind of uh, group that is not connected to the council that can that can hold the police accountable because the council seems to only feel that, that it's their duty to support the chief whatever the chief says and, and it does not uh, push to uh, for the kinds of things that we've been trying to do and uh, kate's story about how she had to fight for all this to get what should have been done very quickly. I mean, it's uh, it's too cumbersome. We need something, a group that it holds the police accountable. And it's not, we're not doing that now. But I think we, we say it is, we're getting, it's improving. I think we're going, the police department, if anything, is going, is, is, uh, going backwards. It's retro. Well, not to argue with your yeah. point about that, but I would say, except that, and if you look at the draft final report, actually this group has done a huge amount of 
policy change. Just, if we had just revised the taser use policy, you know how hard that would be in almost any community? That is a huge thing that we did. That's just one thing. Then we have the social worker on board. We're working, we're pushing and squeezing about the mayor's court. I mean, I have to stand up for this group even though I hate all of you sometimes. <laughs> I really feel like we have actually accomplished a huge amount. It's something that is really hard, and we still have a lot to do, but I think we're, you know, I just want to stand up for this. And I've worked, I've worked with three chiefs so far in, in different ways, like on HRC and different ways. And I, I actually don't agree that we're going backwards because I know the other chiefs that I've worked with, and I actually feel like we're going forward, but I know I'm the minority in that discussion. No, I, I agree with you. I've done a lot of work with Chief Carlson, so he's the well, most open-minded, and he actually makes things happen. Hale would agree, kind of, with me, but he wouldn't really do anything for do it, kind of. Do you have any other suggestions? Just. Um, I mean, I like if, if everybody would just take a stab at if they have anything or not, I would just like to hear from them. Yeah. Uh, good. Yeah. No, go ahead. Okay. So I guess the thing that I find myself thinking about is, um, and you and I had a longer conversation the other day about this. Um, tell me if I'm wrong, but my sense is that you have a model in your head. Uh, maps went to another commission. You have a model in your head of how this is going to work. And that's informing the recommendation that you're creating. I guess my question is whether the rest of this task force wants to spend some time considering the recommendations that we as a group might make. And they may or they may not line up with, I mean, Al's just passionately said, we need, we need a, an independent body that can hold the police accountable. That's a very different model than the one that, that um, you're describing here and that you talked to me about. And so, you know, this is a group, and I'm one of the newest people here, that spent a couple of years really immersed in the justice system issues in Yellow Springs. And I think there's a lot of knowledge and expertise at this table that could inform a set of suggestions or recommendations, rather than each of us individually feeding them to you, whether we as a body want to consider something. So you're suggesting a more full discussion at some point of yeah. what this could be. And maybe there's a document that comes out of it, or I don't know what. Yeah. Let, let me just interject this idea that I don't understand this particular body as substituting for a police misconduct review board. I would view that as a separate body, assuming that there's some desire to set that up. So I, they're not the same thing, and one would preclude. They can, they do uh, coexist in some cities. I wouldn't suggest that. Right, so it. that's right. like, that's one model. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, Lisa and Dick. One really quick uh, comment is I, I wonder if the multi-voting activity that was already done tonight on the priorities is the beginning of the voice of this group coming forward with some priorities for the future commission. Um, one thing I should say is on the recommendation, they're all included. <laughs> well, I mean, the things that, uh, you know, the, and because I took them out of the task force, uh, the only thing that, that wasn't there is the, the idea of the community review board was not something council asked us to look at. But, um, that's the only thing that's not there. So, and, well, we're good. we will come to agenda planning. If somebody wants to suggest a full discussion, we'll, we'll throw it on there. I'm sorry, David. Uh, I don't think it's a good idea to continue the task force ad nauseum uh, as a commission. I think it's better to finish the work and then at the end of the time, it would be appropriate to reconstitute some group to continue that for a finite amount of time, uh, ending in September, December, whatever it is, uh, because, you know, 
at some point you have to stop talking about talking about talking about things. And if we have to continue to meet and get people together to talk about it, we're not doing it. We're not fixing anything. And these are all things that we should be able to fix, even though it does take a long time sometimes to do. You know, if we can't fix it, then you know that's a real problem. Uh, and, it, and it takes time for public input and uh, legal things to be taken care of. And the, the people who actually have to do the work no matter how evil we might think they are, actually do deserve the chance to participate in the process of doing their jobs. And, and if they're constantly feeling like they're being overseen by a group of people, then we might as well have a, a water department oversight group and a utilities oversight group and a pool activity you know, oversight group and you know, commissions to watch everybody and make sure that they're not screwing up and, and they're doing their jobs right. So we need to, we need to at some point, stop doing this. But they right? can't kill people. Well, I'm not saying that's not important to take care of those things, but <laughs> how, you know, if I we can I think this, it's different in a way. I mean, it's, this is more important. Well, maybe it's not more important than water. But, <laughs> I mean, we have commissions for a lot of I th I think, I think, I think, I don't think it, I, well, I don't think it should continue. I think it would be better to finish and then respond to things as they arise, because at some point, if we can't, deal with the whatever the culture is that's causing people to kill people that we don't like, then that's a, that's a bigger problem. You know, I, I, I'm positive and optimistic enough to believe that it is possible to deal with that and deal with some of these things. As Pat says, you know, it's been frustrating, but we, we have got some things done. Um, so we don't need to keep talking about the taser policy. Um, let's not have a taser policy commission. I think that at the end of September, December time frame, you know, a handful of people, three to six people, can sit down and spend a couple hours developing a, a real brief, a basic structure for what to do next to finish up in a year or two, work with, you know, some, some people in this group and other stakeholders to take the recommendations that we've made and the priorities that we've set and then run with that because I think it's time for this to end. Well, we have a lot of different ideas, and I, I don't think we can actually accomplish the kind of discussion that I, I appreciate uh, Beth putting out to us in our working group. I and mean, we have to look at all the things we still haven't finished, and it's 10 to 9. So maybe we can consider um, some separate meeting in September, possibly, almost, dare I say, retreat, not exactly retreat, but a separate meeting where we have that level of conversation with all of our different views. But isn't it going for it? Council has asked for a, a review of uh, our a biannual report in September, second meeting in September, which we gave you the draft, which is excellent. Um, and I have let Council know that I'm bringing a recommendation. In September? In September. After no what that's, the task force after that's, yes. Okay. I was taking input from the committee, but I wasn't asking the committee again for a separate recommendation. I'm not against that. I felt like there were such dice, disparate views by the committee. It would be very hard for the committee to come up with a recommendation. And I also didn't want a recommendation to come up that I would feel like I couldn't support sure. it, quite honestly. Uh, yeah, because there's just, I think it's it's a hard thing. I mean, we, we're we working on a lot of specific things and we do that, we've done that well, but when we try to get together and start to working together on some idea, it seems like that's where we have the hardest problem. So just so folks will know, uh, if you get more input, do you intend to edit what you've done and when you bring it back, or no, you'll just... Well, I, uh, Lisa had suggested in, September, in August, council we only has one meeting, did we want to take a break? And then September, when I was going to bring the recommendation, I said to council, second meeting in September, there would be time for the, I don't know if we want to take a break, I, you know, that was an idea that Lisa brought up, I think, yesterday to me. Um, if we do want to do that, then we've only got one meeting, which is September, um, that I would bring back. And I'm going to be getting input from council, I'm going to talk to staff, um, and then I'm going to, you know, I'm not putting it all in there. I may not agree with it all. I'm going to try to formulate, and I'll probably be talking to some of you individually, you know, who I think might have particular things I want to explore further. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk to that son. Uh, Lisa and I are going to do that together, but it's not clear that Lisa and I are going to be bringing this recommendation. It's likely just to come from me, I believe. I don't 
not sure where. I'm not sure. I don't know what that way is. Can't tell yet. Can't tell yet. We're too early in the process. So yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you for the clarity on that. I think that's always helpful. Uh, we're ready to move on to get our working group reports, and everybody's glancing, glancing up here. <laughs> but oh, I was, can I say one other thing though? If if you have some things that you want to share with me, call me or probably calling would be easier. There. I guess I can't talk to you. I can't talk to you about it. This is not a task force issue, so I can talk to you all about it. We're not because you're not recommending. We don't have. I'm recommending. So I can, you're all citizens. We don't have any say in it. No, I mean, yeah, that's why as a committee. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. we okay. can all talk. So I can talk. So you could, if you got anything you'd like to talk to me about it. I would love to talk to you about it. Sean, we're going to put off public comments until we get through the working group reports, then we'll hear final public comments, because we need to give everybody the opportunity to give them reports, if in fact they have them. Okay. So, yeah. so let's quickly do this. Not an so we'll there's that, that, we'll get that right we'll at the end. Yeah, let's quickly get through the working the group meeting. reports. Yeah. Mayor's group working group. Yeah. If there's nothing to say, we're done. perfectly okay. Well, okay. Nothing to report. Well, we have actually we have not brought our recommendation number two, and we haven't put it through the public comment process. So that should happen. As far as recommendation yeah. number three, I think the mayor is supposedly working on that. I'm not sure yeah, that she's working on it. Right. Well, no, no, that's no, a, no. That's a, that's no. What they told me. Well, told we need to bring our recommendation number two through. Yeah, I, I think you're right about that. Yeah. Okay, police working group. Uh, to report? I don't know about reporting, but I just want to clarify. Going back to our priorities discussion, we have advisory review boards as one clump. Now, our goal, when we're asked to create a goal, was we would research existing advisory community collaborative groups. And we tacked on review boards because citizens were very interested in it. And was, was of interest. Um, and then I presented a short report of what we found out about the reports. And um, at that time, I said, Bill and I both said, okay, we're done with review boards. But other people said, well, let's, that somehow that information that we have researched should go to council. Mm -hmm. So the question is, how does it go to council? And are we as a committee making some level of recommendation or we're just bringing this to say many citizens have, um, and I don't think it'll be a surprise to council, especially the last couple of weeks, that people are uh, concerned with police behavior. They want some way, some venue for this activity. Um, and in our understanding of it, this should come from council down council should figure out how to do it. And then uh, my report, as you remember, offered three or four possibilities of where they could start. But I don't know that we're in a place where we could say, we recommend this. It's just to say, we're just reminding you, you are probably very aware that citizens want this. Here's some research and some ideas. Right. And I, yeah, I remember saying that it's at it, you know, the last meeting that it it would be such a large undertaking that it should be its own group. Exactly. You know, and just take exactly. from what, what we had started. So I'm happy to go to that. council and do that, but I don't think it should be a recommendation. It should just be. And what we did in public, sorry? What we did for discussed at the last meeting, I think, as I recall, we talked about some, you know, like, would this group do investigation? We said no. Investigation is a separate, Skill, but we did talk, I thought, well, about we possibly say what it should do or what should do it. We just talked about what other people do, how other yeah. people do I, it. I recall that we talked about that if we were to do it, that the idea of retrospective review might be the most palatable and possible of what the different. Date. It's what yeah, what date, like what dates yeah. does. Yeah. I remember talking about that. I, I listened and I heard that, and I heard Ellis and Lisa sounding like, you know, we can kind of conceptualize how something like that might work. And I think that conceptualizing it mm -hmm. um, would be very useful. And I don't know that it would be a committee-wide thing. I mean, I was imagining, you know, you, your report right. um, coming to council, but then something that's more specific being suggested that I was thinking, Ellis, 
and maybe Lisa has, and maybe Pat, maybe Kate. <laughs> um, anyway, I thought I heard, you know, this seems like within grasp of imagining what this might be. Um, I, I, if you, if you also oh, write it, Kate, we talked about how this thing came into being in Yellow Springs and crashed and burned. And partly it was council that stopped it for various reasons, probably some very important good reasons. But we said that this has to be something that council defines and is behind mm -hmm. right. and says we want mm -hmm. And it should be something that obviously citizens can come and make their views known to council too. Because um, it hadn't really started, but on HRC we were, we were trying yeah, to get people back here, that, right. yeah, but the council didn't want us to. So it, it needs to be something the council is behind. Well, also in my research or talking to people, it has to be its own thing. It can't be clumped up with, with these other things, policy groups or whatever. So, so, I mean, I think, and this could happen in September or whatever, that I could just give that report and say what Bill and I found and that our suggestion, not a recommendation, but our suggestion is that council gives this serious consideration. Well, I mean, we can also say that it was a, considered a top priority by this group mm -hmm. to be addressed, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. what we will continue Instead. our work is is what we started with, which is what do other cities and especially smaller towns like ours, how do they, how do their citizens groups? But I think the answer is mostly they end up trying to do community police relations. So they would run the main thing they do. It was kind of, we're kind of unusual in doing policy. But that's what I want to be able to report on. John, did you want to add to this conversation? I said, but now I'm going to pass. Okay. All right. Um, so the, what we do want to leave us with a little clarity. So it sounds like we are ready to present to no. Jude. I I think it's a great report, but I do think trying to fashion this retrospective. I don't know what's called this right. Uh, this idea of an invasion, if there's a complaint, I remember part of the conversation was, you know, I think trying to fashion some kind of more specific retrospective uh, process and also thinking when, when a citizen has a complaint, how does that, how is that handled? I mean, there was some, I'm talking about the last meeting, there was some, I heard Ellis and I heard Lisa sounding like, you know, I'm starting to be able to imagine that something that's more limited but could be an important, could play an important role, would look like. I don't think just bringing the report and saying to council, well, the report says here's four things you can do, four ways that. No, no, work. it's. I think it's good, but I, I just, I feel like to, if we just say to council, we think you need to think about this. It's a high priority of the community, the many community members, and our group sees it as a high priority. I mean, I, look who's going to do it. I mean, what's what's it going to be? I, I don't know. I feel like it would be good if there was something more concrete that could come with maybe some small amount of work from someone like Alice. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else small amount. I apologize. I passed because I thought the conversation was over. But my main point was that it sounds like you guys are trying to do work at a JSKF meeting, but I really feel like yeah. we should just hear people's proposals. Yes, you I don't have a proposal, so we should just move on. <laughs> well, I'm just responding to when this report should happen. But we do want this to move forward. I mean, we identify this as a I mean, priority, I, so we need to move like forward report. in some way. Sorry? I'd like your report. You guys have done all this work. I think you can give us some report. And it's good work and it's informative and the yeah. time is right. So she the citizens are concerned. She said she wanted to do it again. No, that council. Oh, I'm sorry. That council. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That that I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You well, I, I think the report could be presented to council and the then, and then, I mean, I would, I would be comfortable saying, or maybe Judith would be comfortable saying, that we discussed it, and that we believe that, well, just as it kind of unfolded in that conversation, that there is a possibility that this kind of a retrospective um, citizen uh, board could could be formed, but there would be work to do, there would be costs that we'd have to figure out. I mean, it, there, there would be next steps. So, I mean, that would be a way to move forward. Um, and uh, I think that there's a, uh, uh, in terms of the finance subcommittee, advisory subcommittee, 
Um, you know, things like uh, having a prosecutor, having there's like the costs of, of beefing up mayor's court, maybe that's not putting it exactly right, but the, there's costs of that restructuring legal costs related to implementing something like this. Could be something that maybe the finance advisory committee could take on just trying to figure out what would it cost to do this because expenses in the village and affordability are also an issue so we have to balance those things out so I mean if, if you brought that report I would be comfortable saying that as the next step I don't know Judith what do you think would you I mean do you support that yeah that sounds fine so you see that as sort of looking at the cost we, I mean, if we there's like a feasibility. Kind of there's a, a lot of different aspects of feasibility, and and cost is one that can't be ignored. Would you have more steps than that, or are you just going to do? I'd have to think about step. that. I'd have to. Th I mean, I, I mean, that would be something that if this if this group, and if you if you're done, with, you know, I heard you say, I'm kind of done with this, it's, right? It's a <laughs> big job. I mean, right. So I mean, if given the given the the citizen response and call for this. I always think of things in terms of like action plans, like what would you actually have to do to make it happen? And I I don't, right now, I don't have a clear sight line through that. So, you know, I mean, I think in terms of council, there's some things we could get started on and maybe the other thing, another aspect to get started on is what are the steps and is there anyone interested in working on that? project plan kind of a thing. So you would present that in September? Well, we, we're going to have to see how our agenda is at council. We have those two items at the second meeting in September. Um, we've got the surveillance issue, what hopefully the second meeting in, or the meeting in August. And so we've got a lot of stuff that seems to be coming up right now. So, But I, I mean, that, so that's what I'll step forward maybe on. Maybe the first it, it does seem like the same as the other one or to step forward. I mean, it's up to council, of course. So, August, we'll go to the and then September, first meeting, uh, Okay, guys, a disparate impact on the poor. Is there a report there? Surveillance issues we've already discussed. Uh, Ad nauseum, <coughs> uh, data analysis group. Uh, I do a report. Okay. All right, then now we're down to the um, the biannual report, and there was a draft that uh, that Pat did, Thank and you. it's attached. And how do you want to proceed on it? Do you want to come up tonight, or do you want people to get with you, or? Yeah, I think just read it, and then what I've said about your work feels like it needs more attention than you know, or suggest sentences. What is the thing presented? Or is it second meeting in September? Oh, this is long. Okay. But I, I would just encourage people to not to, to keep it short enough that the council will actually. Mm -hmm. I was going to say I like your point on that, and something that if there is more to add, I was thinking of summation, which this is like a little bit summation, and there might be some attachments as a way to I love this. I think this is great. Yeah, you would probably be able to add the uh, surveillance sure. thing. The chart is so good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. As a newbie, oh. it's amazing. I think how much has been accomplished. I know. Really, I mean, it's big. Yeah, it's a lot. It is. Yeah. And tough stuff. Okay, uh, then we said we'd save a few minutes for a comment on the personnel issue, loyalty in the police department. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how appropriate it is to have that conversation, but you asked for it now. Uh, I actually don't want to have it. Yeah. As I mean, I don't, you know, I, I don't know how, how appropriate it is, but I think it's very, very important. I mean, I think, I think the chief, I really support the chief. I think he does use community values. And uh, as the um, uh, Jeff Reich reported in the, and I've heard this from many people, he's been very lenient, or perhaps overly so in some cases. So he, I think, does represent the, uh, the community values. I think David Meister also very well reflects community values. When the high school kids want a police officer to come and talk to them about things, they always ask for a Meister because he has kids in the school, he lives in the community and things. The problem I see, and, and the chief talks about officer discretion all the time. Uh, he, put, he wants officer discretion. 
Well, what's, what is Meister being charged with? He used officer discretion. Um, the, the people, and, and it seems like, I mean, I, I, I've been tr trying to find out why the people are so much against him. It seems like it's some, they, so, they don't agree with his lean. They want to be more tough. Send the cases down the Zenia because they will throw the book at them. And, and we, these officers that live out of town, I mean, I, I think of them more like mercenaries, you know, and they want to be really tough. And, uh, and I, I think we're headed for some real problems. But the two sergeants are the ones that are, have this real tough policy. And they are determined, in my, from what I have been able to get, to get rid of Meister. And I think this is, I think they're going to succeed. Yeah, uh, but he had hired an attorney, but they paid a huge amount retainer in order to get an attorney because he felt it was the only way he could keep, the only possibility for him to keep his job. Uh, it's a serious thing. And if, if they win, uh, we're, we're, I think we're going backwards. I, uh, the chief, I have no trouble with but the chief should hold those sergeants to the values of the community. And I don't think he is. Any further comment? John, I see you there. Let me just see if anybody here around the table wants to too. Uh, so I've got uh, Dave. Dave? Yeah, I, I read bits in the paper, and there's, of course, the truth on Facebook and whatnot, and her, you know, comments here. And I just want to know if anybody's actually read all the personnel files. That's what I thought. Many people have read all the personnel files. I mean, all files. the people in this room, and so they know all the facts that are involved in this about. Yeah, what's many going people on have read it. This so is an so ongoing. Is it? You know, and yeah. so, so the whole, the complete story is out there. No, the council yeah. people. Have yeah, read it. I mean, they're, they're, they're not in the room to talk. Well, anybody. that's the, uh, unfortunately they can't discuss it. The chief can't discuss it. The players in it really can't discuss it yeah. because there are lawyers involved. So I actually don't think that everybody is getting. A full story. Yeah, that's and, that, and that, that's where I'm going is that we don't have it. We've got innuendo and maybe some facts and some pieces of information that maybe are true and maybe aren't and maybe you know shading and whatnot. So I don't. I, I think that you know the chief is in a, an impossible spot and uh, you know trying to navigate between forces uh, that are you know uh, can be volunteered, uh, but at the same time you know he can't win uh, and. Um, so many people are um, making assumptions and then getting upset and assuming evil right away. You know, and there's no backing down from having been determined to be evil. Uh, and it's a toxic environment, and I think that that's unfortunate you know, for a number of reasons. And it's gone from one thing to another to another, and this is the current one. I don't know what the next one's going to be, but when this gets boring, we're going to have another one. I don't. I think it's more important. Appropriate to you know, wait and see what happens. Um, and that's going to be trying. I think you go. All right. Uh, we we do have two people. Ken, I'm going to call Ken first, and then I'll give you Sean. You both spoke in public. Um, and keep in mind that everybody here wants to go home. Okay. So we'll, we'll hear our shorter comments better than we'll hear our long. Naturally. Uh, <laughs> I just want to say uh, I'm with Kate and Pat and some others here that. This group is making some progress. I am an exponent with them. Uh, we're not going backward, we're going forward. Uh, I, I'm concerned about uh, what I'm hearing about you, this proposal, that this is sort of a collaborative, this proposal of this board would be closer uh, and sort of advisory than, uh, than I think is really necessary. Um, I think that a, a retrospective group that deals with cases or redress of grievances is fine, and maybe the village couldn't take that, and probably should. Uh, but key to the solution to this problem, I believe, is a, a body that has soup, can see, see the records, see, can, can see the, uh, the dash cam video, the, the, all the information, and then respond to it uh, and keep it. Uh, within uh, control, with respecting privacy and all the other things that the village has uh, 
uh, is well advised to keep under control of. Um, but I'm concerned that we have this idea in this town uh, that we'll have some sort of kumbaya arrangement with the police. No, there has to be some tension and there has to be some separation of powers. Um, I, I, I despair that the council, with, with possibly one exception, thank you, uh, Judith, uh, does not really get it. Uh, and, and, but I can see how it happens. Uh, uh, and, but uh, to her credit, Marianne pointed out that we may just need for we, to have a different council, um, where there people may need to step down or need to be voted out. Um, but apparently, by judging from the last um, council meeting, they're not getting it. I hope that 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 this committee can put something together. Thank you. Ken. And Sean, before you, I thought Corey had his hand up. So it looks like Corey go, will let you be the last commenter of the evening because I know you're going to be quick. Go ahead, Corey. So, my name's Corey White. Keep this real short. Thanks. Last time we were here, uh, I think it was a month or two ago, I was here actually, and you guys were talking about surveillance, and I spoke out of turn. And uh, what I really wanted to get at is my interest in surveillance is the uh, BP station downtown, that's now in Nippers Corner. Um, if he owns it, and uh, I've been in there, 10 years ago I've been in, and I bought a package of rolling papers. The next day, Nipper pulled me over on my bicycle and checked me out for drugs. And I was thinking, what, is he getting that from the camera in the gas station that he owns? Is that legal surveillance or not? I don't know if it is, but it makes me comfortable. That's all I have to say. Thanks. Okay, Sean. Thank you very much. So um, I will add my voice to the chorus of people saying you, you guys are doing good work. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge Fox for showing up and you know they're, they're waiting for um, knowing uh, what came out of um, de deliberating about whether or not to set the civilian report as a priority. So I'm uh, pleased to be able to, to tell them that this group has in fact uh, set it as a priority to um, push forward this idea. And, and um, because I think that the, the wider community will, will be happy to know that. Um, I, I guess um, as far as this issue of um, David Meister and his wife, now certainly uh, we don't know all the details, we're not going to know all the details, um, but just today that there was um, the, the wife of the officer has published online her account of what happened um, and according to her version of, of, and I think it's worth listening sometimes to people who are alleging uh, being a victim of police misconduct. She was chased on the bike path and um, by, by strangers uh, who she, she thought was um, imminently going to uh, either sexually assault her or abuse her in some way and um, this is when all of their troubles started, according to her. Uh, ever since then, um, you know, she, she tried to report uh, how the police didn't uh, even pat down uh, the, the suspect. They let him go. You know, was trying to encourage her to, you know, just work things out with the suspect and so on. Um, after he was s witnessed by the police officer running from around the corner and then stopping, putting his hands up, but yet, you know. Um, not not uh, suspicious enough for them to actually take her version of this of the story seriously. So then, when she goes to the police and says, "I really didn't like the way that they treated me," they say, "Well, yeah, we don't like the fact that you're reporting uh, misconduct and you're the, you're a wife of a police officer." So you know, and and that's that's where it began. And and you know, she she was flaked off by a police, another police officer in retaliation. There was other forms of retaliation against her and her husband. And, and, and that's really her version. So, um, you know, a, a civilian review of the police, I think, should go beyond just, um, you know, reviewing allegations against the police and did they go well. In retrospect, we're, we're just, uh, collecting people's stories. A lot of people are saying they're not even getting phone calls back. So, there's no record being created. So, you know, a, a retrospective analysis is not going to be sufficient. 
we've got to go deeper than that. And we've got to prioritize it, not just you know, because the, the community says that it, it's important to them, but also, uh, thank you, um, we've got to actually put our money where our commitments are, uh, because it's costing us a lot in terms of uh, victims being, uh, having, having the, um, being on the receiving end of those costs. Thank you, Sean. All right, uh, we're ready for the agenda planning piece of this. Anything in specific that we need to talk about for the August agenda? <laughs> it's like ready. Yeah. So, wait, did, did we want to take August? Did we want to take off for August? August. Well, the, our date where we would normally meet in August would be August. I think it's the 14th, but someone should double check. It is. Yeah, and I just proposed it because council takes a, a meeting off in August, so I thought it was yeah. kind of. Model after that. Um, I don't think we should because we have to talk about marriage court. You think we should meet? Right. And I know that sounds. Four two. I don't know. I, I'm just one. I agree with that. I just feel like we have so much we don't. Well, we have, have all this stuff at 9:30. Right. Well, I, I know that Dave. I think David told me before he left that he would be gone for the August meeting. Yeah, he did. So. He did. So, so, so and I'll be gone for the August meeting. Who, who, who else will be gone for the August meeting? Okay, so it's just the two of us. So you won't be here either? I won't be here in David morning. So Warren and Laura would be bringing that for us. Yeah, yeah I would personally. Pardon me? I already said I, I think we You want to go ahead? Yeah, so do right. people want to go ahead? I'm not going to vote because I'm not going to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't vote the sense you know, in any of the audience. Some of us should get a letter, but I think we probably should meet. All right, sounds like we're meeting in August. Sounds like you're meeting in August. Uh, all right, so August agenda planning. Uh, we'll revisit the priorities. We'll obviously have working group reports. Uh, Laura indicated that they do want to bring the second uh, mayor's court uh, proposal to the group to be no passed and noticed and all. And so it'd be passed and then noticed. Right. Yes. Uh, anything else in particular? What about the priority revisit? Well, okay, what about? Or something do people want to spend time discussing? Or? Well, are we going to revisit the, did you already put that on there for the, the commission? commission? Yeah, you want, yeah, you want me to bring any? Would that kind of tie into it? It feels like that ties into it. Okay, yeah. so I'm going to put that as um, the commission. <laughs> Okay. The commission draft. We're asking what you want. We're asking what we have. Okay. Anything else people want to see on this? Alan, anything? Oh. Anything else, Al? No. Okay. Steve? John's got something. I have a general um, agenda planning point, which is that I think priority agendas, which is sort of what we did here, but in the most important things first, are great, and then we should keep doing them. Does everyone agree? So, so in other words, you think your proposal at the beginning was great? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should keep why it going. Why don't we just move it I agree. at the beginning of the meeting? So the working group reports Work. come to me. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. just all the time. And then your business? Yeah. Yeah. Until you decide to change it. Have a different idea. Steve, what, did you want to speak before? I'm no, she just called her. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you raised your hand. It's all to you. All right, uh, so Sorry, there we have it. Say one, there one, one yes. other thing, this is a, maybe it's an agenda item. I don't think we need to discuss it very much, but I think we should uh, hold the line. Of, I don't think we should be hearing the kind of complaints that we were I mean, that's not at all in our charge or our purpose. Like complaints about. Yeah, we can take it to council or whatever. But yeah. We don't want to hear complaints that are related to personnel matters of staff. When we don't have any information. Yeah. We don't have, you, these are the conversations yeah, that people are having all the time. Not, they need to bring it to HRC. Yeah, yeah. HRC. Oh, no, I'm not sure. <laughs> for, for what it's worth, now, now, for what it's worth, we did agree to put this topic on the agenda. With the understanding that it may not exactly be appropriate for us to talk about, but everybody's talking about. Yeah, I think it's, yeah. right. I support people being able to talk about it here. I just, um, if people aren't speaking to, if people are speaking during citizens' concerns, that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, but if people aren't speaking to the agenda item at the end of the agenda, I, I think the chair can cut them off. So who's chairing this yeah. time? Yeah. 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 Steve, can you be Steve. Steve. Oh, <laughs> 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 are you going to be here? Yeah, I'll be here. 
Okay, thank you, Steve. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. Um, and the second, it's a short agenda. <laughs> the August council meeting, uh, which is the 20th, um, is a surveillance piece, and it would be very good if you could be there. Yeah, I'll be back by then. Okay. Right. August 20th. Yeah. All right, is there the, uh, the motion we've all been waiting for this be <laughs> particularly packed? <laughs> motion to adjourn? I move. Second? Second. Okay. Uh, thanks, everybody.